Food for thought. Um, you've encapsulated quite a bit in the broadening the definition of food security, a holistic and multifaceted approach to agriculture and a strategy, value addition, technologies including genetics, logistics and infrastructure enabled value chains, private sector engagement, and again, the command to wash away the shame of Africa's food dependency and food security is equal to political security. Thank you very much. Up next will be His Excellency President William Ruto, President of the Republic of Kenya. Just like Zambia, just like Zimbabwe, just like Nigeria and all of the other presidents who have spoken prior to now, your nation is abundant in resources. Now the food and agriculture business is a multi-billion global enterprise, actually a multi-trillion dollar enterprise. So my question to you is what type of partners are you interested in to ensure that your country and Africa achieve food security and zero hunger by 2030 and in the process create wealth for the people of Kenya? Thank you very much. Uh, first let me extend my gratitude to our host, uh, President Makisau, and appreciate his stewardship uh, in putting together this conversation about Africa, food, and the future. Let me maybe contextualize uh, where Kenya is in um, addressing myself to two issues, uh, two different uh, crops. On one hand, we have tea. On the other, we have horticulture. Um, just to give you some numbers, uh, tea, um, we have close to 650,000, 700,000 farmers. In horticulture, we have about 50,000 farmers. We generate a billion dollars from tea, uh, maybe a billion uh, point two. We generate another billion dollars from um, horticulture. You can clearly see that for 10% of the land we do our tea, we earn the same from horticulture. And the difference is in five areas that informs the trajectory of Kenya's investment in agriculture. For our tea, uh, among the best crops we have, um, uh, giving us good returns, the challenge is for the 1.7 million acres, we are getting the same amount of uh, income as 10% that we have in horticulture. The difference is that, number one, seeds and fertilizer make a whole difference. Um, our seed investment, fertilizer investment in horticulture is higher than our tea and the difference is as day as night. Number two is mechanization. There is mechanization in our horticulture from irrigation uh, through processing and that is why we have ten times higher returns in our horticulture. Number three is there are more young people in our horticulture than there are in our tea industry. The participation of young people is as significant as you can see from the returns we get from our two sectors. The more young people are in a sector, the greater the returns we get from that sector. Number three is the participation of the private sector. We have a greater participation of the private sector in our horticulture sector than we do in our tea sector.
again the returns are tenfold. And finally, is technology. The greater the participation of technology, the greater the infusion of technology, the better the return for our agricultural sector. So what is Kenya doing? Number one, we are expanding our fertilizer input this year. We have 600,000 metric tons made available to farmers, and it is so clear to us as government that the application of fertilizer, the amount is directly proportional to the output of our agricultural sector. There is no magic, there is no miracle. It's just if you have sufficient fertilizer in the correct quantities, in the uh, correct um, uh, prescription, you get the outcome. Number two, we are increasing our farming under irrigation from 650,000 acres to 3 million acres in the next five years. And we have roped in the private sector to provide uh, construction of dams. We are building 100 mega dams in Kenya and 1,000 micro dams to support our irrigation uh, potential and production. And number three, mechanization. We are increasing our mechanization potential from 40% to 75% in the next five years. Again, we have uh, an ecosystem that uh, will bring the private sector into the mechanization of our agriculture. Again, so that we can progressively walk away because there is a reason why smallholder agriculture is predominant in our continent. It is simply because of mechanization. You do not, uh, uh, the extent to which a farmer can do their land is limited to the kind of mechanization and technology they have. And therefore, mechanization becomes a big component of productivity and production. And finally, we will be doing our agricultural extension service, uh, supply of subsidized fertilizer on an e voucher system that is supported by technology. Again, to eliminate pilferage, corruption, and to enhance efficiency. That, in our opinion, is the way into the future. In conclusion, let me say that the fact that we are having a conversation so many of us as heads of state from our good continent and we are discussing food is um, it's not a very interesting thing to do. I think we should be discussing beyond food 60 years after independence. We should be discussing about how agriculture is not just going to feed but it is going to create jobs, it's going to create revenue, it's going to add value, we're going to do export, and that is really the trajectory that the people of this continent expect us as heads of state to have a conversation about. Thank you. Thank you very much, President Ruto. Mind-boggling numbers there, $1 billion um, from tea and $1 billion in horticulture. Recurring themes, the trajectory and transformation in your country, being driven by fertilizers, mechanization, technology in the hands of dynamic youth, private sector engagement, and your investment in dams. I love what you said here, Africa beyond food. The presence of your excellencies here today is evidence that we're headed in that direction and very, very fast too. Thank you very much once again, Your Excellency. I'm going to go next to His Excellency Tiamoko Melie Kone, the Vice President of the Republic of Cote d'Ivoire, for our next question. Um, uh, my observation is that in, in 2021 and 2022, the co during the cocoa season, approximately 5 million tons of cocoa were And Ghana alone accounted for over 60% of global cocoa production. My grandfather was a cocoa farmer, so this question is personal to me. Yet, Africa 
only controls a small fraction of the chocolate and cocoa value added market. What should we be doing to reverse this almost 